Where's my button? My name's Carrie. Oops. Oh, thanks, Megan. Um, as I said, I'm Carrie Fallhaber. I'm a vice president of Justice NYC. I'll, I'll get us started. Um, fun treat. Favorite holiday treat. Let's see. What is my favorite holiday, holiday treat? Um, well, I celebrate both Hanukkah and Christmas. Um, I'm in a, in a dual religion marriage and family. And so I'm going to say I love my mom's homemade potato latkes for Hanukkah. And I am a sucker for some good eggnog for Christmas. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I could see your beautiful faces. And I'm going to toss it to Aisha. Good morning. Good morning, Aisha George, Strive, New York Executive Director. I missed the second part. What are we doing about the holidays? Oh, your favorite holiday yeah. treat, treat or tradition, whatever you like. Yeah. Oh, well, I am greedy, so I like it all. Um, <laughs> anything with some good food and good laughs and good times, I'm there for it. So, yes. And all I just, right. okay, I, I like a real tree. I get a real tree every year. I love that. Always got to have a, a tree in my house. Um, I'll, I'll softball it to Stephanie. Good morning, everyone. My name is Stephanie Aviles. I am the director for the Careers That Care program at Cypress Hills. My favorite treat has to definitely be hot chocolate with whipped cream. <laughs> I'm going to pass it over to Nicole Sanchez. Good morning, everyone. Nicole Sanchez, also from Cypress Hills. I'm the assistant director of career and education programs. I'm going to go with Carrie, the eggnog, for sure. You know, mine has some spirits in it, um, but definitely <laughs> during Christmas is when I have eggnog. And is there <laughs> such thing as eggnog without spirits? <laughs> I, I mean, yes, yes. I didn't know that. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. All right, I'm going to pass it over to Daniel. There we go. Um, good morning, everybody. Daniel Augusto, Managing Director of Workforce with Phipps Neighborhoods. Um, my favorite holiday treat, um, I would say for me, my family, um, it's a Puerto Rican thing. We eat pasteles, uh, which is basically like either uh, uh, meat. Uh, sometimes it's either beef pork. Sometimes I use some um, turkey and it's wrapped in um, ground up uh, green bananas with a banana leaf uh, and they cook it and kind of boil it after that. So it's if you haven't tried it yet, if you know somebody that's a Latino, I would definitely suggest that you ask them to try it for the holidays. And they usually sell them uh, around this time of year, too. All right, I will popcorn it to Amy. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Amy Robbins. I'm the Director of Advocacy with PHI. I would say I have two favorite things. One is a cookie that my mom makes. It's, um, it's all food, right? <laughs> um, it's a cookie that my mom makes that are called Nanaimos. I think there's a lot of um, variations on them, but they, in theory, originated in a little teeny tiny town in Vancouver Island, and I'm from um, Seattle, and somehow we've um, adopted them in our home and they have like this chocolate cookie base and frosting and then a, another little glaze of chocolate on the top and there's yeah Megan just did what I did yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> and then um my sister-in-law is Filipina and um uh she goes crazy at the holidays and I'm missing it this year but um she and my nieces just made 400 lumpia rolls um, that I'm not sure who all is going to be eating them, but I'm very sad that it will not be me. <laughs> Sorry, I let down on my job. Um, I will pass it to John. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. My name is John Marimuthu. I am the Director of Talent Services at Grace Institute of New York. Um, I am so delighted to be here, this being my first meeting. Uh, during the holidays, I am Guyanese, so my family and I, my mother in particular, always bakes black cake because I'm Caribbean, and so she normally soaks the fruits for a year. So that is exactly what I'm looking forward to for this holiday. I'm going to pass it off to uh, Damien. Hello, everyone. Uh, Damian Samuels. I'm the uh, Associate Vice President for Youth Services at Goddard Riverside. 
Um, don't really celebrate any holidays at this time of year, but as a kid I did. And um, my family came from Barbados um, in, in 1918. Um, we don't have a whole lot of Barbados roots, though we're really New Yorkers. The one thing that stayed with us was coconut bread. We made coconut bread and my whole family on Christmas, I could, I would literally, after the gifts, my favorite part was eating coconut bread and drinking hot chocolate. So that was always a tradition that um, certainly we replicate for the kids, even though it's not sort of the same energy, but um, I will pass it to Errol. What a what a good pass. So my family's from uh, Barbados as well. Um, and so similar to John, we we my, I've always wondered about the soak in the fruits for the black cake for a year thing. I've always wondered about, uh, you know, is it like the, the health standards of them? Like it's a year of soaking like, you know, but it's in it's in a certain liquid uh, that we won't say here. Um, and so um, that's my I'm. Errol, I'm the, uh, what an intro, Associate Director of Academic Innovation and Career Success um, uh, on the Gutman team with Provost Blake and uh, Trisha Jones. And uh, yeah, so that would be my selection, the black cake. And I can't wait. And I did see it in a corner of my mom's house uh, soaking. Um, you're going to call the Food and Drug Administration. Um, all right. I'm going to popcorn it over. I hope I, hope I don't call someone that was called already. Provost Blake, I'm going to send it to you. And I want one of everything. So I love pasteles. My best friend's Puerto Rican. But apparently all pasteles is not created equal. So you can't just get it anywhere. Um, but I'm Jamaican. Um, so I, I'm not going to have any black cake this year. I'm, I'm sick of it. <laughs> I love it, but it's so fattening. Um, and I think, but I will have lots and lots and lots of sorrel. And the sorrel that I have is not the ones that are sold in the store. So sorrel is this drink we drink in Jamaica. Um, some people put cloves in there, pimentos. Um, I like mine with a lot of rum <laughs> and a lot of ice. <laughs> um, so that's my favorite treat. So I'm Nicola. I'm the provost here at the college. I've been here 11 years. Um, and I'm happy to be working with uh, Errol and Trish. And you know we're looking forward to learning from this entire team. So I'm gonna send it over to Professor Jones. Trish. Thank you, um, Dr. Blake. Um, my name is Patricia Jones. I am actually the associate uh, professor for the HIT program that um, we are getting up and running and um, currently creating, and will be fully online. Um, so for us. We really don't have like a specific dish, but um, every year I kind of get together with my a mom and my daughter and stuff and we bake cookies and stuff. So that's just a good time of year for us just to spend some quality time as family. So um, I'm looking forward to that this weekend. So uh, let's pass it over to, let's see, he, Salma. Thanks. Hi everyone, good morning. Um, I'm from Bangladesh and so we don't necessarily celebrate, you know, Christmas, all that. But when I do get together with friends and family in general, I'm a big uh, dessert fan. So anything cake related, brownies, cookies, um, I'm going to go there first for dinner. Nice. Thank you. Uh, did anyone not? Get to introduce yourself. I think we went around the full room here. Oh, sorry, Megan. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just basking in the glory of all of these like delicious treats and things, and now I want them all. So I thank you for that. <laughs> hey, everybody. Nice to see you all. Um, my favorite treat this time of year is anything peppermint. I'm a sucker for all of it. And you know, it's everywhere at this time of year. So hot peppermint, hot chocolate, peppermint mocha, peppermint bark, whatever it is. I love it. Um, and also my partner is from Hawaii and he makes this, like, he always makes a big bowl for us to snack on, like while we're cooking and hanging out of popcorn that's covered in something called lihing mui, which is like a dried plum powder and it like is like a sweet salty snack and I eat way more of it than I should ever admit while we cook <laughs> <Not hungry. laughs> so that's my that's my my fave 
Thanks, Megan. Sorry to leave you out. I thought you might have gone first. Um, all right, that was good. I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm I want to know about all the things I was like Googling. What is Sorel from Jamaica? <laughs> and like all different things that you said. So I'm inspired and I, I love how the holidays like bring us back to something and memory. And you've kind of all made all made me more excited to to take some time downtime and some celebration time with family. So thanks for indulging us. Um, let me share my screen so I could just go over the agenda. We were changing it on the fly here um, because if, if I don't know if anyone wasn't here when we announced that the um, funder last minute had an emergency this morning and isn't joining our conversation. conversation. So we've adjusted the whole agenda um, this morning for you and, and we're going to have a really great working session. So we're in the welcome and overview now. We pretty much can check that off our list. Um, the implementation plan and logic model development will be some, some review to catch folks up to speed and just a reminder, because it's been a month. Uh, and then we'll have you all uh, in workshop space, building on that plan, thinking about activities, milestones, all of that. Um, and then action items and close. And very likely we will finish in, in less than two hours, but we, we are heard you and are gonna give you more time to work together. So how does that sound everyone? Can I get some thumbs up, head shakes? Wonderful, uh, thank you. And I'm going to pass it over to you now, Megan. Thank you again. Thanks everybody for your being for being flexible um, and for helping us prep for this conversation. So keep it in your minds. It's I think it's going to get rescheduled with the funder. So hopefully. Um, so let's let's do a little re, little bit of review. Um, in our last session, Carrie Carrie described some of the various tasks needed to complete a full implementation plan. So we just wanted to quickly review those and restate them to keep them top of mind, as Carrie said before we move into a brainstorming sesh. Um, so by March, we'll produce a final implementation plan and the associated deliverables are the narrative of that plan, uh, logic model, theory of change, service delivery model, principles of operation, which will guide kind of our structure, governance, roles and responsibilities and so on. And then a memorandum of understanding, which isn't listed here, but I think you guys are all fairly familiar with that one. So just to keep everybody refreshed, let's just go through some of these definitions of what those things are. Um, the implementation plan is a plan for achieving our mission created by you and includes a statement of need, our goals, um, some graphic representation of our service delivery model, as well as our intended outcomes, the governance structure, staffing needs, timeline, and budget. So all the pieces will end up in that narrative. Next slide, please, is the logic model and theory of change, which is kind of some of the activities we're working on or in service of this piece. Um, the, for those of you who don't know, a logic model is a roadmap for a partnership to achieve its vision. It's important for a lot of reasons, um, including providing a work plan and language to convey what the network is, what impact we will have, and how we will make that impact happen. Um, we've been coming together as a network for several months, and we've agreed we want to describe this logical sequence showing what an intervention's intended outcomes are. So if we provide X, the result will be Y, and that theory of change aspect really zeroes in on the how. And service delivery model is a blueprint, which is often in like some sort of graphic model um, for how to organize and deploy people and resources, how we're achieving the mission and how our activities for the partnership are being realized and how we're participating in them. Our principles of operation, I kind of said this before, but document outlining how the partnership will operate as an entity. Um, it'll establish membership roles and responsibilities, how we're going to make decisions, and how we use that structure to achieve our goals for the partnership. And lastly, the MOU will describe the terms of an arrangement between jobs first and a partner or partners, meaning you guys, and must be signed by all parties, um, showing that we agree on what we're putting forth. And lastly, this isn't necessarily a deliverable, but I wanted to bring this back up. Um, this is Jobs First NYC's impact framework. 
that we touched on a bit last month and explored as we were brainstorming. Um, and I wanted to bring it up as a reminder just of some of the key categories we want to leverage in guiding our work, those categories being people, institutions, partnerships, and systems. Um, we won't get too deep into this today, but it's just up here for like a quick refresh and, and reminder. Brainstorm time. All right. <laughs> so we're going to just dive right in today so we can we can pick up kind of where we left off. Um, we'd really like to continue brainstorming ideas around this logic, logic model development and action plans for our goals and strategies to ensure we have those clear pathways to meet outcomes. And doing this will lay a really solid, solid foundation for developing all those tasks that we need to complete before we can formally you know, launch our network. So with that said, and in our pivoting, we heard you guys about your feedback after last month's session where several of you said you would have liked more time in your groups to think and talk through and, and build on your ideas. So we try to build that into this working session, some time to work through those ideas more and attach some actions to ideas and partnership um, with one another. So the brainstorm is going to be in Jamboard pages again, and we're going to focus in on the specific training strategies and the employer engagement strategies. Based on discussions and feedback from all of you, it seems these two strategies are top priority that will enhance and improve all our other strategies and goals that we're trying to achieve. So for this brainstorms theme, please, let me go back. Oh. Oops. Thanks. Thanks. So the, the theme of this brainstorm, if you will, we want to ask ourselves when thinking strategically, how can we get more people into better quality jobs in healthcare via our collaborative network model? So we all do our own work, but coming together, how can we improve jobs and get more people into economic opportunity? Um, taking into consideration that better quality jobs may mean different things to different people. And there is new momentum for funding to support these career pathways and advancement. So that's kind of the thinking behind this session. So now I'll describe the how. Um, so I'm gonna walk through this and I'll describe the Jamboards and I'll show you guys a, an example in a second. But um, in the Jamboard, you're gonna see four pages. Slide one is like a goal setting graphic just to offer some inspiration to get your brain thinking. Um, slide two will be the main workspace where you're gonna see a bunch of uncategorized stickies. Um, and these stickies were pulled from the previous uh, work that we did. And we're gonna just try to build on those and develop them further today. Slide three of the Jamboards will be like a blank template, which is just there for additional space if you guys need another page to work through your ideas. And slide four, we'll have an example logic model that's unrelated to healthcare, but it has some metrics in it. So you can kind of get an idea of the level of specificity we're hoping to include in these three lines of our work to attain, obtain our goals. You with me so far? <laughs> Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, so to do this, we'll be splitting up into breakout groups, uh, similar to last session, where one half of you will focus on the training strategies. The other half will focus on the employer engagement strategies. We'll give like 15, 20 ish minutes to work, uh, depending on how things are going for people. Um, then we'll close the breakouts and come back to the main room. We'll have a quick share out where each group will highlight like one or two key highlights from their work. Then we'll send, we'll go into a second round where you're going to switch the strategy that you worked on, but you'll be in the same group. And my screen just froze. Um, so in doing so, similar to last month, uh, we recommend pre-selecting who's going to share out from your group. And you can also dedicate a scribe, if you will, if it's helpful to kind of have only one person writing in the stickies and, you know, moving them. And... I will go into a visual walk through the jam boards in case anybody needs a refresher, but I want to see if there's any questions about what I just kind of zipped through. Does it make sense so far? Okay. Thanks for the thumbs up. Appreciate it. Let me see if I could share my screen now. Sorry, one second. Do you want me to share a Jamboard? 
I just had to get my, I have two screens going on, so I had to make sure that I got myself to the right one. Can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. you see goal setting 101 should be the first page? Yes. So this is just like a little inspiration graphic just there if it's helpful to you all. Um, the next is where you're going to see the uncategorized stickies. So this is just uncategorized. They're pulled from previous discussions from you all. Um, and we charge you to make this unorganized page a bit more organized into the columns you see at the top. So those resources or inputs, activities, outputs, outcome, and overall impact. Um, we're trying to get as specific as we can and thinking across these columns for these, um, these two categories that we're gonna be working in. Um, so these stickies are here from previous work, but please feel free to add new stickies, further clarify the ones that I've plugged in already, you name it, no wrong answers. This is how we're going to start shaping and building how we're going to accomplish the goals we've set forth with one another. The third page is that just another blank template if you feel like you need another space. And last is an example logic model with some metrics in here so you can see kind of what we're hoping to do with these two specific strategies specifically today. Um, and lastly, if anybody needs a reminder on how to navigate and use the Jamboards, to make a sticky, you click this icon here, a little bubble will pop up. You can write a note, you press enter, it'll save, and there's that. And if you wanna edit or add to a sticky that's already there, all you do is double click it and you'll get back to that editing box. And if anybody is inspired to like draw, like circle something or like make a connection to something, you can also use this pen to, to do so. Let me delete all of this so it's not in your way. All right. Any questions about how to use these Jamblins? Is there actually a link or something that I can find it? Yep. Oh, yeah, we'll share those. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder, John. Yeah. Any other questions before I I get to those links? I'll get them, um, Megan, so you could focus on any questions. Thank you. Um, so Carrie's going to drop those in the chat, and we really want this to be fully in y'all's voices. So Carrie and I are going to be a little bit less hands-on for this go-around so that we're not dictating you know, too much of the conversation that, because we want this to be yours. Uh, we'll pop into rooms to answer any questions and help think through things. So if we're not in your room, there is a button in the breakout rooms to send us a signal asking us to join. Um, the Jamboard links are in the chat and I wanna make sure you guys are able to open them successfully. So if somebody could click into them and give me a thumbs up that they're, wor they're working, that'd be great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome. So. Uh, to determine which Jamboard you're gonna be working on. Um, like last session, please be sure to note the breakout room number, the little pop-up box that comes up that uh, you're being sent to. So if your pop-up window says you're being sent to breakout room one, you'll be working on the training related strategies first. And if it says breakout room two, you'll be working on the employer engagement strategies first. Does that make sense? Cool. And, oh, sorry. I'm just gonna add two things, Megan. Um, one is just for a reminder for folks and for new folks, everything that you see on those stickies that Megan laid out on the Jamboard came from things that this group said previously. So the, the past, I think, probably two to three sessions of workshopping, you know, everything from like, what are our barriers, opportunities, resources, all of that. And then the last session where we were talking about impact framework and um, you know activities and goals and what we could accomplish together, Megan like took a lot of time synthesizing all of your great ideas, putting it on post-its, and setting up the framework for a logic model that you see there of like inputs, outputs, outcomes, impact, all of that great stuff. So we're you know now charging you to say, okay, this is what we heard from you. Tell us how it logically flows into something that can we can activate as a group to say, you know, these this is what we want to accomplish, and this is how we'll accomplish it. And what we envision most likely you adding 
um, after it's organized and if you have time to add things is a little bit of the how, you know, like what's the activity? What's, what are some of the best next steps? Um, that was one thing I wanted to say. And what was the other? Oh, the other was if we put you, we're just kind of randomly putting you in two groups. If you feel super strongly of like, hey, I'm the one on my team that has like the deep employer engagement experience, or I'm the one who designs curriculum and training, and like you think you're might be in the wrong group, just let us know once you're in there, and we'll we can pluck you out and switch you. But we'll we'll try to keep a balance. So if we don't, uh, you know, we don't want everyone in one group, obviously. So sorry, Megan, to interrupt. No, I was done. I was just going to ask if people had questions. So that was perfect timing and not an interruption at all. Okay. Any questions before Carrie sends us on our brainstorming way? No, no, no. Awesome. Awesome sauce. Let's do it. Okay. Here we go. And just noting the time, 1033. We'll, we'll tell, give you some... Uh, what time we're pulling you back some five minute warning or something. Okay. Okay, I think we have everybody back. Thanks for another round of your flexibility with all the tech trouble that we just ran into. And we decided instead of doing a second round, we just gave you guys more time since we did have that tech trouble. So we're just gonna have the group share out and then we'll, we'll do a, a, some action items and I'll close this out for the day. Does that sound all right with everyone? Coolio. Um, so group share out, just kind of high level, like what did your group discuss? Maybe some like one or two key takeaways you want to lift up. And if there's any like idea you guys might have had or that you talked about, about like what's the what's the next step to bringing some action to fruition? So guiding questions there, um, whatever you feel best, whoever your reporter is from each group. So group one was the training group. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Who's your sharer? Go ahead. Thank you. All right. So just some high level. Um, should we share a screen? Is that helpful? Yeah. If you like, yeah, go for it. All right. You still have the powers, right? Okay, cool. Thank you. So um, this is our Jamboard, right, for um uh, uh our activity some big takeaways like we noticed a a, a majority of the post-its uh fit into the resources and activities column um and you know we there there was a discussion about we, we you know trying to interpret um some of what was said in some of the the sticky points and that was a little hard so um there was a lot of um dialogue around um uh, what might that mean and the interpretation right the results of that you know, results in us placing in whichever category. Um, we decided to be innovative and create our own category here. <laughs> um, Love so it. That means um, this is basically we we weren't able to come to a full consensus on this, and we didn't want to just plop it in the wrong um, in the wrong column. Um, and I would say in the uh, conversation as well, there was we did um, we were looking for some clarity on the difference between an output and an outcome um and some of that's a, a little subjective um and i had raised a point that in a logic model i use in uh for a separate program um i out you know outputs is and i may be flipping it but like one is about behaviors and attitudes and knowledge learned and then the other is like a more tangible like outcome so or result so we were trying to figure out you know um some clarity and definitions there um and i think uh but overall rich discussion and um a lot of training uh, training uh post-its so yes it's good love it thank you i appreciate you making that clarify section because if you know one group's needing clarity that probably means the other group will too um yeah. so i think this is really helpful as we kind of take these brainstorm sessions and start to really like massage it into a thing this highlights for me, like, okay, next session when we have a discussion, we should discuss the clarity around some of these things before we go into another, mm -hmm. another session. So I won't take too much time to do that, but I will say from my perspective, the definitions of like the output versus the outcome is similar to what you were saying, where like the output is kind of more of a tangible 
thing that you produce and an outcome is like more that behavioral changing higher level thing that you hope to get. Um, so we can we can dive deeper into that if uh, that could be helpful for people um, to clarify what those categories are and those definitions. Wish I had the, wish I had thought of that myself, but that's teamwork makes the dream work. So thanks, y'all. Um, and group two, do you guys want to share out some? some yeah, stuff? that was. Um, I'll be sharing, so I'll share the screen. Um, I think our conversation around like clarity was just the the time frame for the outcomes right like yeah what is considered long-term intermediate um and then also we were trying to clarify between long-term outcome impact and impact to like what are the differences between those two things um we had a lot of post-its to begin with and we added a lot more too um we, we noticed that we didn't have anything on under resources so we tried to clarify that a little bit um, I felt like a lot of the things, um, even though like the focus was strengthening employer partnerships with that strengthening, um, a lot of the outcomes are not just related to the employer relationships, but also what um, participants gain from said employer relationships as well, right? So things like, you know, what happens in their lives and how their lives um, get better from those those different changes um and I think we we kind of also focused on um what types of things we would like to see um in relationship to to stronger um employer partnerships right like all of those things like opportunities um, for internships, mentoring, shadowing, and then going back and saying, okay, well, what activities do we need to do with employers ahead of time to, to build that relationship and trust so that these outcomes can then um, actually form? I'm just writing notes down. Thank you. I, mm -hmm. love that. I, like the, I like that approach where it's like, okay, what is this like more aspirational goal or outcome? that we hope to achieve and want to, you know, facilitate for the people we serve. Mm -hmm. So let's backtrack. So like we have this, like what's step one and what, what are those activities that will inevitably be read up, lead up to that? So I think that's a really great approach for us to, to model and learn from, from your sharing that. I appreciate that. I also like the approach of, you know, saying what you like to see and like the changes in the participants' lives, because whether it's through employers or a system or direct service, that's who we inevitably want to serve, right? So I really like that. And I also hear you echoing the need for some clarity around the definitions of those categories. So like the time frame for that outcome, you know, that can mean different things for different organizations, but what does that mean for us? Um, so I think that tells me we'll review some of that together and make decisions around what those definitions mean for all of us together. And we can continue synthesizing and streamlining our activities to reach our, our stuff. Thanks, guys. Any other thoughts or items to share that other members of groups wanted to lift up to? I want to make sure I give space for that. Cool. Thanks, guys. And with that, I'm going to try to be true to my word about us, uh, our, our word of us ending early. Let me get back to my other screen here so I can get this link. Um, so again, thank you for your participation. It's like very energizing to always work with this group. I look forward to it every month. Uh, I'm really eager to see what, what happens as we uh, forge ahead. So as always, I'll send a summary and some action steps after our session. Um, and we kindly request that you please fill in a quick, uh, quick feedback form. Uh, thank you, Carrie. Um, there's some questions in there asking for feedback on like a proposed draft of like the network's mission, vision, population um, that I kind of presented on, presented briefly last month. And there's also a question gauging people's availabilities or interest for an in-person session. I think we can knock out a lot of this like brainstorm, you know, jamming stuff with like the tactile. Um, I don't know about you all, but that really energizes me and gets my, my ideas flowing. Um, so if you could provide feedback on that, that would be great. 
Um, and secondly, we're working at Jobs First internally, me and Carrie are working to update some of our healthcare network like materials so we can start getting things together to, to put out into the universe. So we'd like to kindly request that you guys send us a high res uh, picture of each of your organization's logos. Um, and you can send that to me via email or there's a file upload option in the feedback form that Carrie just shared. And the last action item is a reminder that January 19th at 10 a.m. is our next regularly scheduled meeting. And very, very last but not least, Again, huge thanks, big capital letters for your flexibility today with the curveball from the funder and with the tech trouble and all sorts of things. So your, your committed participation is greatly appreciated. Carrie, do you have anything before we go that I missed in action steps? No, just um, if, if there is any kind of energy around that, um, the 19th being in person, we're, we're happy to plan for that. Um, so let us know in the feedback form, I know. You know, who knows what's going to happen with illnesses over the holidays and things like that. So we'll, we'll of course, always be safe, but um, we would love to bring the group together face to face in the in the new year and as soon as we can. And for and, yeah, maybe we can get some breakfast and all that good stuff. too. <laughs> absolutely. There's always food. If we bring people together, there's always food. Exactly. <laughs> Awesome. Um, all right, guys, with that, I, I give you back to your day and with, you know, I'll stick around for a few minutes if you guys have anything you want to chat about or questions. But otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you have relaxation in your life ahead. Daniel, I hope your arm shoulder recovers fast and I hope everyone's doing well. So thanks, y'all.